Hello, welcome to Joy Maker Virtual Learning and a special welcome to all our new viewers. I'll be talking to you today about direct and indirect proportion and we're going to talk about the arrow method. So we'll be going through direct proportion to variables, inverse proportion to variables, direct proportion with three variables, inverse proportion, three variables, and the last one is combination of direct and inverse proportion with three variables. Okay, so the first example is two variables that are proportion. Chef Joanna uses 600 grams of flour to make 25 pies. How much flour would she need to make 12 pies? So just put it into a simple table. We're talking about flour and pies. So first is 600 and 25 pies. The next one is we're making 12 pies, but we don't know the number of flour. So just replace that with a letter, X, Y, whatever. So I prefer to use X. Now, because it's the direct method, that means they all have the same direction. They move the same direction, up and up, down and down. That's what the proportion is all about, the same direction. So what you need to understand is that you need to read the question to understand what is direct. Less pies means you have less flour. More pies means you need more flour. So this is how you need to understand the question. Having understood it direct, then you know the arrow method properly. Because if you don't know the direct or inverse, you mix it up. So now we know if you want to make less pie, you need less flour. So it's direct. So when is direct? Always start your work with the x to form your simple equation. So we're going to go up for flour. So that's one side of the equation. So we have x over 600. We're going to go up because it's also direct. That will be equals to also 12 over 25. Then you solved it. Simple as that. Always start with the x. x over 600. So we're going up. Once the direct, the other one must also go up, the other one. Now it's to solve for x, it means you're going to multiply both sides by 600 and you work this out. So you have 12 over 25 times 600, and when you work it out, 600 divided by 25, and you times the answer by 12. So you're going to have all multiplying divided by 25, they are all the same. So the answer will be 288 grams of flour. 288 grams of flour, and it makes sense. We we're using 600 flour grams to make 25. If we are making 12, which is lesser than 25, we should need lesser flour, so 288 grams. Example two, two variables inverse. Five robots can produce a given amount of chairs in 16 days. How many robots can produce the same given amount of chairs in 40 days? put into a table form. We're talking about robots and days. Robots and days. First, five robots, 16 days. In the second sentence, we are using 40 days, so under days we have 40, but we don't know how many robots. Let's make sense. Why is it inverse? More days means less robots to complete given way because if you have more robots, you will spend less days. So if you are spending more days, means you don't have enough robots. So the number of robots and days are also inversely related. So you know that this is inverse proportion. Always start from with the variable x. So the first one is x over 5. Indirect or inverse means opposite way. So if you are going up for days, you should be going what? Down. So that will be equal to 16 over 40. Be careful with this. Don't make it 40 over 16 because it's direct. So indirect is up and down. So it's, this one is indirect, sorry. So that's the only difference. Always start with the letter going up, fine. It doesn't matter that way. But your second one needs to be very, uh, should comply with whether it's direct or indirect. Then from here, you multiply both sides by five and you work out X. When you work out x, you have 80 divided by 40, and that is two robots. And let's see if it makes sense. 
we had five robots working so we worked for 16 days we had only two robots working which means they got to do more for the for other five therefore we need what more days and it makes sense 40 so always check your answer to see if it makes sense now we are going into three variables three tractors can plow five acres of land in two days how many acres of land can four tractors plow in six days so we have tractors acre of land and days so put it into a table form three five two simple check four is for tractors put it under four six is for days put it under two we don't know the acre of land so we call it x try to see how the acre of land relate to days and relate to tractors you need to do them separately more days means more acres to be plowed if you're spending more days on the farm you plow more area of land so that one is direct so we know acre of land and days are direct so you can see all going up now let's see acre of land and tractors also more tractors means you're going to plow more area of land that is also direct so that's why they are all pointing up start your equation with the letter x over 5 is going up it should equal to going up also so that will be 4 over 3 then times it by this also going up 6 over 2 work this out so you're gonna have when you work this out is equal to 4 so x will be equals to multiply 5 both sides and x will be 20 acres let's see if it makes sense yes so four tractors working six days will plow more area of what land makes sense now let's look at where we have inverse proportion for three variables eight men can complete a job in 10 days working six hours a day in how many days will 10 men working four hours a day complete the same job this particular question was actually explained during lesson three but we're using the uh, the equation coefficient method this time let's see arrow method so we put your information into a table men days and hours we don't know days so we call it x let's see how this relate to hours and men more hours spent on a job means fewer days needed to complete a given task that's inverse so days and hours inverse so up down let's see days and men also more men at work means less days to complete a given task so with eight days is going up men should go down start the equation from x over 10 it should equal to is going down so that should be 8 over 10 times by going down 6 over 4 then you work it out for x this is 48 over 40 multiply both side by 10 and work it out x is 12 days x is 12 days so 10 men will take 12 days working four hours so 10 men working four hours a day take 12 hours to complete the job last one what about the combination of direct and inverse proportion six robots can produce five machines in 10 days how many days will it take four robots to produce eight machines put robots machines and days into a table form so four is the robots under four and the robots eight is machines under eight so days is what we don't know so we're going to see days and machines relationship and days and robots relationship more robots spend on a job in fewer days needed to complete a given task so that's inverse so we know days going up robots must go down let's look at days and machines 
more days spent on a job means more machines will be produced. If you spend more days producing, you will produce more machines. So that is direct. So days going up, machine must go up. Start the equation with the days because that's where the x is. x over 10 is equal to this one is going down, so it should be 6 over 4. This one is going up, so it should be 8 over 5. Then you work it out. 48 over 20 equals x over 10. Multiply both sides by 10. I'm working it out. So x is equal to 24 days. X is equal to 24 days. Thank you very much for watching. So these are four lessons to help you overcome all your problems with direct and indirect proportion. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Pass it to your friends. Subscribe if you are new to this channel. Thank you very much. Bye.